The rumors that there might be a Horizon Zero Dawn remake in the works, similar to how The Last of Us just had a remake, seem to be true. This has been corroborated by a couple of different sources, and the internet really hasn't been shy in showing that they're a little confused and asking why of all of Sony's IP, Horizon Zero Dawn, a game that's only five years old, is the one to get the remake treatment. I think the answer is a little bit simpler than a lot of people might think. And the answer is it's not supposed to make a lot of sense for core gamers. This is purely a business decision on Sony's part. Come come, come with me. I'll, I'll show you some stats and we'll, 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 we'll chat about it. So if you're a core gamer, you're probably aware of some of the core gaming IP that have recently made their way into more mixed media strategies and found success. The first one that's probably the biggest, most like upfront case of this being successful is The Witcher 3. The Witcher got a TV series through Netflix, extremely high production value, massive budget, and this directly drove sales of The Witcher 3 game. You can see in this article that The Witcher 3 sales were up 554% thanks to the Netflix show. And while the headline sticks to The Witcher 3, the article goes on further down to talk about how this is a big jump across all of the Witcher games in the IP as well as the books. So we're seeing the first game in the series hit an all-time high peak in January 2020 of 12,000 players and we're seeing the second game also enjoyed a described as noticeable increase. And why this is important is because essentially as soon as the Netflix TV show dropped, it drove a lot of people to go and check out the game, which means massive profits for CD Projekt. Now, even though it's the same studio, we have recently had another massive release of a mixed media strategy for another game, Cyberpunk 2077. We've just seen the release of Edge Runners on Netflix, an anime by Studio Trigger in partnership with CD Projekt Red around the Cyberpunk 2077 IP. We can see from this tweet here by Benji Sales that that has led to massive daily peak concurrent players growth across the entire week after the launch of Cyberpunk Edge Runners, peaking out over 136,000. This can also be seen here in this graph of the Steam concurrent player charts. So we can see these peaks slowly getting higher and higher and higher, raising up across this week from the 19th through the 25th. And you can see that trend line, the players trend, quickly taking a steep increase. Finally, in terms of real numbers, we have evidence that this has been a massive success, not only just for people coming back to the game to play it, but also people purchasing the game. And one is probably also driving the other. Here, the Cyberpunk 2077 Twitter account over 20 million cyberpunks have been roving the streets of Night City, and this is referring to 20 million copies sold. We can see in this article here that Cyberpunk 2077 has cleared 20 million sales, and this is up from a sales figure that they reported back in April saying that the game had sold 18 million units. We do have some data down here that as of December 2020, Cyberpunk had sold 13 million units. So across basically all of 2021 and half of 2022, we see that 13 rise up to roughly 18. And then we see it go from 18 to selling another over 10% of the total units to get to the 20 million copies sold. Massive growth on the back of a mixed media strategy featuring a TV show. Now, why would this be relevant to the Horizon Zero Dawn remake? Well, I think the answer is simple. TV shows drive game sales. And in this case, we have a massive first party IP that's owned by Sony. Those game sales are best when they are as expensive as possible. Let me tell you a little story. So a little while ago, uh, a bunch of people broke into my house that I was living in and they stole a ton of my gaming gear. And I obviously had all of my games stolen, so I had to think about which ones I wanted to replace. One of those ones that I wanted to replace was The Last of Us. I purchased a secondhand disc copy of the remastered version of The Last of Us. This is maybe late 2018. The Last of Us remastered for $10. $10. And this is the key reason why I think that The Last of Us has got a remake and the key reason that I think Horizon Zero Dawn has got a remake as well. Why would The Last of Us get a remake? Well, we know that The Last of Us has got a TV series coming out on HBO. Highly anticipated HBO, massive network, very well respected, a lot of money going into this. And so this, based on previous data, is probably going to drive a lot of game sales. And what does Sony want? They want as much money from those sales as possible. This is an excellent 
opportunity for them to sell a bunch of PlayStations and a bunch of games. As per my story before, you can pick up The Last of Us Remastered for not that expensive. Sony doesn't want to make $10 or $20 or $30 a copy on a game that's old. Sony wants to make maximum money, maximum cash. So they want you buying a brand new PlayStation and they want you buying a brand new copy of the game. And how do they justify taking a game that's however many years old, that's already had a remaster, and then charging more money for it? They remake it. In the case of The Last of Us Part 1, it was a full kind of from the ground up remake added a bunch of accessibility features. It was a substantial kind of leap forward. Whether or not that's worth $70 to you that's probably played the game is irrelevant. The point is that if someone who has had nothing to do with that series before wants to go and buy it, they will go out, they will buy a PlayStation, and they will buy the newest copy of that game, which is The Last of Us Part 1, specifically named that, and they will pay full price. You probably might even see bundled console deals around that time where you can purchase a brand new PlayStation with The Last of Us Part 1 as a deal specifically for the release of that game. And that's important because we've known since May that the Horizon Zero Dawn property is getting a TV series on the back of Netflix, Sony has revealed. So we know that Horizon Zero Dawn is also getting the TV show treatment. Sony that has their own studios, they have their own movies that they've made before, and Netflix, and we can look at something like The Witcher. Witcher is a phenomenal high-budget show. Netflix has other phenomenal high-budget shows like Stranger Things. We can probably expect a very similar treatment to Horizon Zero Dawn as these other massive properties. And what does that mean? That means Sony has another opportunity to create a mixed-media strategy where they bring in a ton of new PlayStation owners and new PlayStation players on the back of the release of this TV show. And again, Sony doesn't want those people picking up something from the PlayStation Classics collection. They don't want people between now and the show picking up the cheap version of Horizon. They don't want people who have potentially been given it before through PlayStation Plus or through the promotions that Sony has done where they've given Horizon away for free. They don't want them playing that copy. They want them playing the best copy that they could possibly have at the most money that they could possibly pay Sony for that. And what does that look like? It's buying a brand new PlayStation 5 and it's buying a brand new copy of the $70 remake of Horizon Zero Dawn. And I think that's honestly all of the complexity that you really need to apply to this situation. Although Sony wouldn't have reacted specifically to these edge runner numbers because they're probably too recent, Sony isn't quickly making decision to remake Horizon Zero Dawn a couple of weeks out from the release of edge runners. That is going to be way more fuel on the fire for them to seek this strategy, to continue along these lines, to do mixed media strategies that bring in new PlayStation owners. I'll leave you with this other little story. So there is this idea in marketing around the idea of like, you need to capture the widest possible market. And I have two examples of this. The first example is, it was a little while ago, basically Netflix CEO said, they consider Fortnite to be their biggest competitor because Netflix is in the business of showing you media for X amount of hours. And Fortnite at that point was showing a lot of media to a lot of users for a lot of hours. And that's essentially what Netflix is competing with. You can either sit down and you can watch a Netflix TV show, which will mean that you're committed to keeping your subscription, or you could be sit down and play Fortnite. So that's actually where that competition is happening. It's on the hours. It's not between TV show streaming services. It's between anything that can take up your time. Gary V has a similar story that he has talked about before where he went in to pitch to Budweiser and he went in to pitch a marketing strategy that was based on the fact that they wanted to be the best beer in the game. And they basically like laughed at him and his pitch. And at the end, what they said is, we're not in the business of beer share or alcoholic market share. We're in the business of throat share. We're competing with Pepsi and Coca-Cola and everything else that could possibly be drank somewhere. And I think that is leading into Sony's strategy here. They're in the business of selling games and they're going to go after as many markets as they can. And the transition of new users from streaming services via TV shows has been proven to work in a couple of examples. I imagine that they would probably be able to get access to Konami's data for their Castlevania TV show as well. Plus, I'm sure there's other video game TV shows that have come out, including Arcane, that they can probably get access to the data for. They can probably build a pretty strong case that 
this is a strategy that's going to work. It's going to sell units. It's going to get new users in so that they can grow their user base. And it's going to get people buying games at full price. There's also been another announcement of a Horizon IP multiplayer game. And that's another perfect launching pad. So you watch a TV show, you pick up the game, and then Sony can use the hype that's generated by that to market their multiplayer game that's coming out in the future. On this channel, we talk a bunch about gaming and gaming industry stuff. If that sounds interesting to you, you should subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.